Hi, and welcome back to EdTech Insider. I'm Andrew Cohen, the founder of Brainscape, and today I'm here with Aaron Knight, the founder of PhraseMix. How are you doing, Aaron? Doing very well. How are you? I'm um, great. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what PhraseMix is and how you ended up starting it. Um, PhraseMix is basically a site for English language learners, um, and I take the approach of teaching, uh, you might guess by the name, I teach English with uh, useful phrases. Uh, when I first started learning foreign languages, I, like a lot of people, I found phrase books are, to be really useful. You know, you learn a phrase like um, phrases to use when you're going to the bank or going to a restaurant or something like that. I found that really useful, um, but that usually ends with you know the beginning stages of a language. I want to kind of carry that into more advanced language. Um, so specifically, how that works on my site is. I will describe a situation, um, like one that I came up with the other day was, if you um, if you cook a nice meal and then your wife compliments you on your cooking, but you don't really believe her, then you say, um, you're just saying that. So that's an example of a, of a situation, and then I uh, write out the phrase, and then break it down and explain each of the parts of that phrase. So do other language learning platforms not usually teach you phrases at all? Or is it the, the method that you're teaching phrases that sort of differentiates what phrase mix is doing? Um, I don't know that I don't know that other methods don't teach phrases, but I think that there's much more emphasis usually put on single words and grammar, especially in the very traditional curriculum, right? Um, so I was telling you about the Pieces I break I break each sentence down into pieces and, and those pieces would be uh, usually not individual words but I'll break it down into um, maybe a word but maybe more than a word maybe a phrase or a sentence uh, you know the entire sentence like a um, grammatical concept within there yeah sometimes they'll have a grammatical concept or sometimes it'll just be two words that often appear together um, like for example the word uh, uh, intense might have, there's certain words that come with intense often, like an intense feeling. So I might teach intense feeling as one, um, one unit together. And when somebody's studying a language using educational technologies, you know, there's, there's some that offer sort of just a, a drill and practice uh, aspect, and then some that, that put you in a context, uh, yeah. like phrase mix, or even like sort of a Rosetta Stone or, or the immersion environment. Where do you feel like is sort of the interaction between the two? Yeah, I think it's, in an ideal world, you would be able to learn language in context. You would be able to learn language by using it um, or by reading it or, or watching it on TV or something like that. And then be able to sort of capture that and use repetition to sort of to, uh, drive it into your, into your brain, so to speak. So the exposure through context and then the, the repetition as, as a review rather than an introduction method. Right, yeah, yeah. I think I've, I've been guilty of this in the past when I've learned foreign languages, the main, um, the main foreign language that I've studied is Japanese. And I've been guilty in the past of taking a big list of vocabulary words and trying to just remember them one by one to cram for a test or something like that. And it's without any context, you can get a little bit out of it. You can learn, you can sort of get the, the beginning of a word. I like to think of um, words or phrases or pieces of language as kind of like a tree. And if, you've ju if you're just learning the definition of a word, you're, you, that's the trunk of the tree, but you're not getting to the branches and the roots. There's so many more aspects to a word or a phrase or a, a grammatical concept that you can't, you can't get just by it. Um, repeating the same um, one piece of, uh, like one definition or one meaning over and over. You have to kind of explore all the parts of it. Yeah, it's funny, when I, when I learned French, I actually created Brainscape to help teach myself French. It started in, in an Excel macro. And I, I found myself, you know, I, I would put in the words into the system based on having learned them in real context, whether it was in a book, whether it was in, in real life, playing a game, cards, you know, whatever I was doing with people. Um, and then when I would study certain words or phrases that I learned, sometimes I, I completely forgot having even learned it in the context. So in a sense, I was, I was just studying word lists. 
And I always wondered, you know, how important was it that I had originally learned that first word in context if I couldn't sort of like put myself back in there. So it's, it's, it's kind of funny the, the interaction between the two and, and how having that, that initial seed planted through, through context is, is so valuable. I mean, I think the best way to get exposure to new, um, to a new piece of information is to actually have an emotional connection to it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can associate a feeling with it or a concrete experience that you've had, then, that, then that's ideal. Um, but I think that what we have to build out is systems for people to get more exposure to the same things and kind of keep track of what you've been exposed to and repeat it. And then also um, just ways to go deeper into how, how things are, how phrases are used or how words are used. So what other technologies are you planning on kind of adding to your website in the future or maybe you know, uh, integrating into your website through, through other partnerships that would uh, continue to, to improve on the learning experience? Um, first thing I think my, my readers have been kind of begging me for a year now to, to add some sort of audio or, or video aspect to it. And it makes a lot of sense. Um, right now I just I write out phrases and sentences in text format. People have to sort of guess how those are pronounced. Um, so next step for me is definitely going to be adding some sort of audio or video content. With a live voice or, or with uh, an automated? Uh, live voice, definitely. I think that um, I think that a live human voice is it's super important. It makes a big difference. Yeah, I've personally I've tried things where it was com it was a computer generated voice and it may be helpful in the short term. Like if you have a sp one specific word that you need to know how it's pronounced and you just can't tell from from reading it, mm -hmm. then it can be useful for that. But um, there's a lot of information about um, intonation and stress patterns and things like that that you can't get across. In Right, it goes back to the, text. the emotional connection that you were saying. You yeah. know, you're going to really feel like uh, you're connecting. Um, so if somebody out there you know, wanted to partner with you on, on the technology or on, on with the content, uh, how would they get in touch with you and how would they find you? Uh, Phrase Mix. That's me. Uh, if you search for me on Google, you'll find my website. If you uh, go to Phrase Mix on Twitter, that's me. Uh, my Skype handle is Phrase Mix. It's a great name. So I've got a lock on Phrase Mix. Yeah, PhraseMix.com. I'm going to flash phrase it right here on the, on the bottom of the screen here. here. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming in here and talking with us. Thank you. Aaron Knight with Phrase Mix, and I'm Andrew Cohen with EdTech Insider. We'll see you next time.